the next part is going into you know um a different topic which is your album fear your brand new album man um oh, we're going to be talking damn. about that <laughs> the bus that it created the songs as was the um our article and stuff like that and you know a few more other things man so um can you talk about that as well yeah fear is basically you know um where you can see me uh, skin devil as mr evil he's playing a new character from yeah. South Park. <laughs> 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 no, basically fear is a concept that I, I even said on my other interviews that fear was actually, um, um, because at the time when I was in my darkest time, you know, when my grandmother died, I lost the custody to my children. Yeah. Um, I felt very down. And then even my dog died, you know, I had a, a, a golden retriever. Oh man. He passed away at the same time. Um, but he passed away before my grandmother. And then after that, my grandmother passed away because he passed away on July and my grandmother passed away on, you know, on November. So, uh, it was really like, like, like I felt like God is hating me. And this, that's the sort of vibe I got yeah. from that. Um, losing everything and fear is like f you fear to lose everyone around you. So that's basically the fear concept that I made. And then you have, you know, many, many emotional songs on there. Um, especially you have like Revolution, My Girls, I Miss My Girls, um, you know, Grandma, the song that I made for her. Yeah. Um, these are very, very emotional songs that I wrote down. And then you have also funny ones like Charlie's The Ron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You have, you know, some Mr. Evil song, Skin Devil. Um, then you have also serious songs like New Breed, you know, it's very, very serious, even though yeah. you have some, some bars, <laughs> punchlines. Bars, man. Crazy <laughs> yeah. bars. Yeah. So I tried to be very versatile at picking and choosing the beats that I wanted for my album. And oh yeah, and Eek Beats, um, I have only one song, I'm Gone. It's also one of the emotional songs that I ever yeah. wrote, I'm Gone. Um, that was produced by Eek Beats. So that's the only uh, beat producer that I have a different one because the rest yeah. is from the same guy. But Eek Beats produced, I'm um, gone. Shout out to Eek Beats, man. He's, he's yeah, a dope, shout out to Eek Beats. And dope you know, friend, man. Pretty dope. And shout out to you too, my friend. I yeah, mean, yeah, man. In the intro, I mean, damn, that was crazy. <laughs> it, it took me a lot of, lot of fucking tries. You know what I mean? <laughs> I we know what done, you mean. Man. I mean, we artists really needed to have more tries before we put it out. Yeah, but I was yeah. very, very happy. I mean, but you also had, you know, a lot of dope features, man. From you know, um, Pace one from the outside is King Handsome, John Jigs, yeah. Little T, yeah. a lot of you know dope singers too, man. And it was pretty dope, you know, witnessing that, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm so honored that I have John Jigs. I mean. I mean, wow. I remember I heard John Jakes from a friend of mine. He's an Hungarian rapper from Hungary. Yeah. And I saw that he did a song with John. And I was like, okay, maybe I will reach out to him. And maybe I can also do a song with him. So I reached out to John Jakes. And, you know, we were discussing what we were about to do and what the project would sound like. And, um, yeah, he was really, really open. I mean, I, I love John Jakes. I mean, I even listened to his uh, project. He now released, I think, Gigometry 2. Oh, so, yeah, so I've seen that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, so it's very dope. And he's very kind, very helpful. He also, you know, suggested, you know, how you could um, build your rap, your lyrics better. So he's very sharp when it comes to this type of stuff. So shout out to John Jakes, man. And yes, um, I have Pace One, Pace One, same. I reached out to him. Um, he was all very open to the collaboration. We were discussing, you know, about deals and everything. Yeah. We came to a conclusion and we decided, you know, we decided to do that. We go through. And, you know, I'm so happy because um, I wasn't even sure because of his mainstream success he, that he had with the outsiders. Yeah, yeah, it's that, crazy, man. That he would talk about, you know, the stuff that, you know, about people sacrificing the family's fame and stuff like that, you know, some some wild conspiracy theory shit. So yeah. I was happy that he really dig that topic and 
he jumped on to it as well because you know they say some rappers sold their soul and they would never do that or admit that yeah man and it's a real thing too you know it's crazy they yeah, some wild yeah. stuff <laughs> yeah yeah so i'm pretty i'm very honored that he's on my album um yeah i have even aria rade you know revolution uh agila from she's the russian singer on depression I mean, she did a very great job too, and Anastasia on Move On and Grandma. She did her thing too, uh, and Lydia, you know, on Let's Dance. Uh, yeah. I saw the reaction. You really loved Let's Dance because he had this merengue or whatever you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it has a Latin, a Latin um, influence. This beat. And oh yeah, this song, this fucking song, took me like four months to really get it done. Let's what dance. About, um, Lydia? Or? Yeah, let's oh, dance. Man. Took me like four fucking months. I had to re-record it, re-record it. I don't know what happened at that time, but I remember that um, when me and Lydia we were practicing uh, on our uh, on at her home, we were really like practicing. I was uh, she was singing and I was like rapping. And I know what happened at the time, but my voice did not want to fit in with the beat. And I was so fucking angry. I was like, come on, man. I'm, I'm, I'm burning my, I'm burning my, my, my money in the studio for studio time. And it it takes me like three, four months. And I was like, and when I finally got it done, man, I was so fucking happy. And it's Mm. now it's one of the most stood out song on the album. It's really dope, man. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, with an emotional and raw album like Fear, me personally, to me, I feel, you know, that it brings back, you know, that old school hip hop where you, you know, heard the struggle, the hunger, the pain, mm-hmm. and even the story, even, you know, the comical side of an artist. Do you feel hip hop is lacking that rawness and realness nowadays? Yeah, I definitely think it lacks of it. Um um even though the underground rappers so when you go to the underground scene you have some people who have emotional but i don't know what happened but since 2023 or 22 it's like this even on the underground scene i don't know i feel like even those emotional songs are getting like like not really are not really recorded anymore i mean the only one who does that that is Vinnie Paz from the Jedi Mind Tricks. I don't know if oh, you yeah, know yeah. them. Yeah, they're the only ones who really can do emotional songs. But the rest, I mean, I don't know. It's like, it's. I don't know why people are like that. I don't really know. Because I remember when I did Fear, I knew I, it had to be emotional. It had to be also something relatable. So I could not only do funny things. I mean, of course, yeah. I love doing funny things too, but I also got to, you know, the listeners also wants to breathe after a good laugh. So that I was, that's, that's my, that's my mindset, how I uh, feel. Cause I also want to put myself in a position. If I'm a listener, do I really want to have only jokes or do I really only want to have depression songs? So I try to balance it off, you know, like, like have some party songs, uh, la- uh, good time songs, like you're laughing your shit out of my yeah. humor. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have some crazy, real ass, lyrical, miracle, spiritual shit like New Breed. That is <clears throat> true, man. So um, also with, um, you know, Fear being a very personal album, would you say mm-hmm. this is one of the most, you know, difficult projects that you have ever, you know, made and had to, mm-hmm. you know, record? No, it was not, definitely not, a, uh, except for Let's Dance. The other ones were quite good, so I didn't have that uh, problem. And Fear was more like an emotional experience, like a roller coaster um, between my lowest point at the time when I was writing down those lyrics and there were times like I didn't want to record anymore and I just wanted to end my life and you can even definitely hear on I'm gone that that actually that actually I was very high when I was recording I was popping like five ecstasy pills um I was drinking like a bottle of vodka and you know, the studio guy, he really like 
yo moreno are you okay um you don't have to record it if you don't want to and i'm like like shut the hell up let me record that <laughs> shit <laughs> Like, I'm paying you, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm paying. Can't you see? I'm now in my zone. Why are you disturbing my zone? Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I fucked up. And you can tell my voice that I was really fucked up at that time. Yeah, you can hear also the emotions, you know, in those songs, man. And we'll exactly. get to, um, you know, certain songs. If we do have time, I'm not sure, you know, how long this would be, man. But um, we'll definitely, you know, get to um certain songs and stuff like that, man. So yeah, um, sure. I also know that, you know, you uh, were featured on the R Report due to, you know, fear and stuff like that. How do you feel about mm -hmm. that? Oh, that I was in the R Report. I mean, it's an honor and a blessing at the same time. And God is graceful. What more can I say to it? That is true, man. I, w I was very, you know, proud and happy for you too, man. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. So um, now we could probably talk about the songs. Um, I'm not sure, you know, if I'll break the interview into like one part and two parts. You, you know what I mean? So, um. Uh, it's it's still work. I see the elapsed time is still moving on. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it does not you know stop, man. But um, yeah, um, we're gonna go ahead and you know um talk about you know a few songs on the off of the album that I feel yeah. you know really showed a different side of you and you know brought mm -hmm. that you know MC out of you, man. So um, <laughs> of course we're gonna start off you know with the first track called New Breed, which is the perfect single that shows off like I said you know your skills as what's the other song you know um. Skin Devil featuring Lydia. Those two, I believe, were um, really lyrical, man. Um, can you talk about, okay. you know, the process of that, of those two songs? <laughs> of those two songs. So New Breed, um, well, actually, before New Breed starts, your intro comes in. So the New Breed only shines because of your one of the greatest intro you ever recorded. Oh, so, thank you, man. <laughs> man, I'm, I, it, yeah, because um, I don't know if I told you, but uh, I was on that Chop It Up podcast and he yeah. said that the intro really blends in well to the New Breed song before the New Breed song. And it's, it's, and I was like, real man, I wish you could hear that. <laughs> That's so, man, because it took me a while. Like, I even told you at one point, I don't think I can do this, man. I just keep fucking up. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. You told me that, but I was like, nah, just do it, just do it. We'll figure out something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, New Breed was, you know, like I said, it was the time when Austrian rappers, when I, I felt, like, disconnected from them. Like, really, like, they... They tell me like, yeah, we can do something. And then like, they don't pick up their phone. They don't do shit. And then they rap about how miserable their life is. And I'm like, of course your life is miserable. You're not doing anything about it. <laughs> so what the fuck? And, you know, the thing is, there were so many Austrian rappers. Before I met Lil T and, and, and the other ones. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Lil T. My, yeah, shout out to him. Before him, you know, all, most of the Austrian rappers like like they never wanted to do songs with me because because of my weird lyrics that I do or or because I didn't fit the gangster style yeah. and I was like, come on, man, you cannot be a gangster. You never shoot no one just because you were stealing. Yeah. And I said, we are in one of the safest country in Europe and you rap about <laughs> that. Yeah, you rap about that you're gonna kill <laughs> Like somebody. I know you, man. You live across the street. I know you. <laughs> you're not like that, you know? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, that, that's just the thing that I could never do gangster rap genre because yeah, yeah. I would look very ridiculously when I would rap about how many guns i own and how many yeah. drugs i sold i mean and and you uh, know we see uh, that with a lot of artists too you know that yeah it's faking and i don't like that that's why i keep it with my style like i'm yeah. more like the comedy one the clowning guy but i can also make serious songs you know so new breed was like a direct uh, direct diss i was taking shots at those austrian rappers and even i i even said the line that austrian rappers are not um relatable or something like that because yeah. they all suck <laughs> so yeah yeah, you, yeah you were going for the throat man yeah, of course of course they're not internationally known they have nothing they reach nothing but they they think of themselves like they're the kings of hip-hop and that's yeah. really really sad and uh, yeah skin devil skin devil Oh man, Skin Devil. I was like, you know, actually I wanted to do Mr. Evil Part 2, you know? Oh, with John Jay? No, 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 no. With, with, 
it was planned with Lydia, but uh, okay. the title was originally meant to be Mr. Evil Part Two, because you, if you if you listen to it, both of them starts like eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> both yeah, of yeah, those, yeah. yeah. And I was like thinking, you know, it would be a good continuation, but then I scrapped the idea, and I was like, you know what? Let's call it Skin Devil. And this is how Skin Devil was born. I mean, I was practicing also at Lydia at her house because when I came over to her, yeah, it was only like musically, you know, we were just focusing on her music. She was focusing on the sound because I wrote down the hook for her and I was like singing to her and, you know, I'm a, I can't really fucking sing. I'm so fucking <laughs> whack at it. And, and then she, and then she was like, okay, now I know how you want it, but let me show you like this Moreno. Is that okay? Da, 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 na, na, na. And I was like, God damn. Yeah. As artists, you know, you can give each other, you know, pointers and stuff like that, you know? So it's pretty Exactly. Dope. So shout out to Lydia for being on Let's Dance and Skin Devil. Um, the same with Let's Dance. I, I wrote down the lyrics. I told her how it should sound and she made it more, more, let's say, amazing, more amazing than I could ever done that. I mean, yeah. I could never even dream that how amazing it was. So when I was writing down Skin Devil, Skin Devil is basically where I have some direct shots at, you know, at uh, the Vatican house because they're yeah. molesting children. So, yeah, Skin Devil is also very, very hard to listen if you're so very sensitive little bitch. But no, nah, it's, it's, you know, I love I love my works. So um the next uh question I got man mm-hmm. um we also have like songs like depression I'm gone goodbye mm-hmm. that are you know battling you know depression suicidal thoughts and suicide so with songs mm-hmm. like those like I really want to know you know your take on you know how society treats depression and suicide in men like do you feel like you know we don't give it you know enough you know awareness or what are your thoughts about it unfortunately not because I can see it even um, I don't want to name the person, but I can see how her family are dealing with her depression. And, and it's not only her, but it's, it's mostly like everywhere. I can see it ev- everywhere. Like, like once you have depression, people feel embarrassed, you know, it's like yeah. they want to, they want to lock you somewhere where nobody would see because you bring, they feel shameful for the family. And when you have like scars on your arms or whatever, it's like, they don't want to, you know, Hey, it was my fault. Maybe I was too harsh on you. Or maybe I was like this. Yeah. Nah, they, they just, you should rub it off. Be a, be strong, you know, don't let you, if I could survive the world war three, uh, I mean, world war two, then you will survive the shit too. Yeah. And, or they don't take it seriously as an illness, you know? So yeah. I don't think that, I mean, the awareness from us artists are there, but in the day to day life, not really. I don't see it. And even the doctors are like, uh, some of them, they just, you know, write down the prescription drugs and that's it, take them and then you'll be fine. And if you, it's not, you know, really if you helped. get it, yeah, it does not help. And, you know, you can also get addicted to it. And I don't know that you can even harm this person. And once you get addicted to the prescriptions you're writing down, I mean, yeah. that's, oh, that's over. I mean, you can overdose and I don't think the possibility that those guys need help. You know, they need, you need to talk to them more. You need to take time with them more. But everybody's so fixated, you know, when you go to a shrink, you know, you pay for an hour, yeah. I don't know, like like 175 euros. I don't know in, in, in dollars how much that is. Um, and then, you know, you want to talk a little bit more about your problems and he's not, oh, time is up or you got to pay more. Uh, yeah. My next client <laughs> is waiting. Go out, out the door. Let's make an appointment for next week and then we can talk about it again. And, you know, and once you're in the zone and then you, you, he interrupts you and you, and he says, let's do it the next week. And then by the next week, you just forgot what you wanted to say, you know? Yeah. So I don't think the awareness is really there. I mean, even though they try, as you can see in some media outlets, but I mean, that's not enough. Let's be honest. 
That is true, man. Um, you know, I believe like they really don't care, you know, until it hits home, it happens, you know, to their kids or even them or, you know, someone in their family, then, you know, they take it more serious, you know, but it's crazy, man. So, um, but you know, on the other hand, music is something now I can also send when I vent my emotions through my music. I mean, I hopefully and hopefully I can help people who really suffer um, from suicidal thoughts and depression because these songs are meant to um, not that you're going to kill yourself when you listen to them. When you listen yeah. to them, you you should feel very related to it. And like, I can relate to that song. Maybe I, it will help me to get better. So that's that's why I was recording these type of songs. Yeah, music is very, you know, powerful, man. It can, you know, do a lot of stuff, man. It can help. Yeah, to so, stay um, positive. Yeah, that's it. So the next question I got for you, um, Moreno, is, um, let's see. So it was a song, you know, My Gross. It was hard, you know, for me. I probably believe, you know, for other people to listen and stuff like that. It had so many emotions from the lyrics to the actual, mm. you know, recording of, you know, your daughter's voices, stuff like that. What do you mm. say, you know? maybe this song would have, you know, been one of the most, you know, difficult songs you made for the album. And did, you know, they also get a chance to listen to it? Um, when I was uh, writing My Girls, yeah, that was definitely also one of my, um, oh, the most emotional song I, I ever wrote. I mean, most of them. And, you know, um, it's very hard to describe for me because at yeah. that time I, I thought i'm gonna lose them um now of course um now i have a contact with them again so step by oh, that's step that's awesome man. yeah step by step i'm allowed to visit them and but they're of course not in vienna anymore and they're in hungary it is it's still tough you know it's still yeah. tough because um they're on the other side of the country you know you have to buy the train ticket to get there and it takes like three four hours and then I have to go back to my country because the next day my work is going to start. So it's like, it's, it's hard. It's definitely hard. And when I was recording it, my girls, uh, I think I was drunk too, like, yeah. and high as well, because I actually wanted to end my life and I was almost dying over from this shit because I fell on a train or a railroad oh. drunk as hell. And I was so lucky that it, it was late at night that the, those train didn't yeah. kill me, you know, cause I somehow, I don't I have no, I don't have no remember at all. I somehow just climbed out of it and went home safely, I guess. Man, that's... Or else we wouldn't be having an interview. So yeah, yeah. man, that's, that's tough, man. And, you know, God has a plan, you know, for all of us, although, you know, it may be hard, man, but, you know, there's still, you know, brighter days and stuff like that, man. Yeah, sure, sure. So definitely. So yeah, and I'm glad, you know, you're here today, man, you know. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad too, because I don't know how my daughters would have taken that if I would yeah. really die. You know, they but still you know, need that's, it, you know? So, exactly but at that situation you you don't think of it you know you just yeah. want to end it because you cannot bear the pain you have to you know swallow or yeah you just think of that moment you know yeah 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 exactly so you know after that i went um to a therapy session and then i got out of the therapy session and then strictly just focusing on my music and that's how it kind of went from there that now i feel better and i don't take drugs anymore yeah, i'm proud of you man it takes Thank you know you. a lot of courage you know to move on you know from drugs or you know substance abuse man it can be hard yeah it can be very hard but you know <clears throat> um now i see things are a little bit clearer um and i cannot wait when my next ep will come out and then you will see some changes from me. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, definitely. You know, can't wait for that, man. It's about to be dope. Yeah. Actually, I planned it like to release this year, but I think it will come out next year. Oh, next year? Yeah. Yeah. Because the thing is, since fear has really like, like has, has now a little, um, how you call it, 
a little spotlight and there's yeah. so many rappers and singers that want me to be featured on their project so that's crazy right there man. so <laughs> yeah so so uh for for instance Agila who was on depression she's yeah. now uh she wants to release a new album or her solo album i think it's her third one or or second and she wants me that I should be featured on her album. And it's, it's a very oh, honor because, yo, she's from Russia. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Shout out to her, man. She's pretty <laughs> yeah. dope. Yeah. So, and then there's a rock artist who wants me to be featured on his project. So it's like, wow, it's crazy. Oh, man. So that kind of goes into, you know, the next question I got. So with fear, it obviously, you know, opened a lot of doors and gave you a mm. lot of, you know, um, exposure not only you know in the u.s but all over you know the world too right exactly, exactly so did you you know did you ever imagine fear would you know be you know well received around the world like it did um i mean i i was imagining that it would have some positive reviews even though even though it has some like three two songs which can be very sensitive to the from for the to the today's society yeah so i didn't think that it would be that big big you know i mean for the underground for for myself you know for an indie artist like myself uh it's huge i don't know what to sell i don't know what to tell it's very huge i don't know what to say it's very very huge you know what i'm saying and hopefully this album will land on Billy Eilish's doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. <laughs> so that goes into our next question, man. So out yeah. of these three, you know, who are you picking? I do. I'm not sure if, you know, I'm going to say the uh, right name. It was the artist that you dissed. Um, in New Breed, I do believe. MC Replay, right? <laughs> so, no, it, it, it wasn't actually a diss. Yeah. It was just... Uh, like, like uh, or? yeah, yeah, I was because, uh, well, let's say she's she's a lesbian rapper from from the <laughs> UK. Yeah, and and I told her that I love you, <laughs> like like <laughs> I don't know, and she said you do you do know that I, I'm into girls, and I like fuck that. Oh, you, you know you want my sausage. <laughs> I know, <laughs> man. So out of out of these three, who are you picking? Um, MC Replay. Billie Eilish or uh, what was her name? Uh, Charlie Theron, I do believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's the one uh, you know, you're picking, man? Uh, it's difficult because MC <laughs> Replay and Billie Eilish, they're both whack. <laughs> and they're both talentless hacks. So oh, I don't know. Man. It depends who will come after me. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> it oh, depends. Man. No, but, but you know, MC Replay, no. Actually, me and her, well, actually, we were friends, you know? Like, oh, she man. knew that I was that crazy guy. But yeah. I don't know what the hell happened to her because... But she knew uh, she, about the skin devil, man. Yeah, she knew about it. But she wasn't fond of Mr. Evil, let's be honest. <laughs> Oh, um but you know we were like facebook friends so whenever she wanted um me to support her i i really supported her but last i mean last year she kind of like blocked me for no reason oh, crap. <laughs> yeah she spent, you know it coming you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah maybe maybe yeah she blocked me and i was like damn is that the things that i get i mean you knew already uh, i think she lives in a whole in a you know her own bubble world and yeah. you know you cannot destroy her bubble world because yeah, that is true man it will aid it will end fatally but you know i have no hard feelings if she's like that like a little pussy then it is what it is <laughs> Yeah, man. But so, uh, I think definitely Billie Eilish will win the race for now. <laughs> oh, man. What about uh, Charlize Theron, man? You're yeah, just Charlize leaving her in the dust. <laughs> uh, well, you know, Charlize Theron, I mean, you know, I have actually no no, uh, um, no foul regards to her because she's a very talented, very, very talented actress. And yeah. I even like some of her movies. Um, 
not all of them, but some of the movies are really, really well done. Especially Monster. Actress. Yeah, she's a good actress. actress especially yeah, actress, oh, no. actress, yeah. Especially Monster that even won an Oscar. Even I even say that. And uh, Mad Max with um, oh, what Mad was the Max, guy yeah. named? Tom Hardy and 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 Charlize, they really had great chemicals, chemistry. I mean, not chemicals, chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> they had great chemistry together, and I even because I like the early, I like the the old school road uh, Mad Max from the yeah. early nineties, I guess. And when they made a remake, the uh, wow, I mean, wow, it was really great of a movie. But my issue with her is my issue with her is that um, she has a. So this is the reason why I started to. So you kind of cut off. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, no, she, oh no, man, she, what happened? Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, like I said, she forced the 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 bullshit agenda on her kid, and this is this is the reason why I started to make fun of her. Yeah, man. Oh, so dope. You know, I uh, saw it too, man. So, um, the next question I got: Do you have any, you know, advice for our, you know, for up and coming artists, man? Yeah. Um, take your lubricant gel, put it <laughs> on your hand. Uh, watch some porn <laughs> and masturbate as hard as you can. Oh man! Because you can burn your calories and then you can think faster. Facts, man. Who are you know your top three you know porn stars, man? Porn stars, top three. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, number one is Billie Eilish. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> she does that on the side, you know. <laughs> um, second is uh, Mia Khalifa. Oh man, yeah, she's dope, man. <laughs> and the third one is um, Dolly Buster. Yeah, I'm not, you know, seeing her, man. Oh, you should. We'll definitely, you know, have to, you know, check her out, man. Dolly <laughs> Myers is pretty good too, you know. Nah, she's. I don't know what the fuck this is. This is a creature. Oh damn, he's sending shots to Dolly Myers. <laughs> Yo, man, no one's safe from you know Billie Eilish. Down to you know on Violet Myers, man. No one's safe, man. Yeah. Oh, man. So, Miley Cyrus um, looks like a creature. I don't know what the fuck that is. No, no. It's neither uh, a boy. <laughs> no, the, the it's neither a boy Violet or a Myers. girl. <laughs> yeah. The porn star oh, no. Violet Myers, man. You, you don't know who oh, she hell is. Oh no. no. <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh man, no, not not Miley Cyrus, man. Oh, oh Miley Cyrus. Si oh, oh, okay. No, no. You mean I, I was saying Violet Myers, like the porn star. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Damn. Man. Oh, okay, okay. But she still look like a creature. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. She probably does, man. Um. So the next question is, who are your top five? Um. You know, dead or alive, man. A top five, dead or alive? Oh yeah. man, I don't have no top five. Let's be oh, honest. Oh shit. You don't? No, I I don't. I really don't know because, of course, back in the day when I was a young teenager, I would have said, you know, M, Tupac, Biggie, and yeah. Bigel. But you know, on the course of the time, I've met with amazing rappers. Um, I've listened to many uh, amazing rappers. Yeah, and they're all unique on their own way. M is dope in his own way. Black Thought is dope oh in his God, own man. way. <clears throat> Freeway is dope in his own way. Merculous is dope in his unique way. Snoop Dogg is dope. Uh, you know, I could yeah. mean Tech Nine, uh, Chris Calico. Um, I even like, I know I'm a sucker for this, but I even like Ludacris in oh, the no, early 2000s. Dope, I mean, he's dope. Yeah, yeah. He definitely I love brought, Luda. you know, Brand New Wave too when he came out, man. Yeah, exactly. Um, he was signed to Def Jam. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Beastie Boys are dope. Uh, yep. Run DMC, Public Enemy. Um, I just discovered, you know, MC Shan. You know how dope he was. Yeah. Um, KS One and and you know the Boogie Down production. Oh yeah, the Duck he, Down team. Yeah. Oh man. Goals, man! Yeah, Helter Skelter. You know, Sean Price. Rest in peace. He's dope as well. Yeah. I mean, even though if they don't have like mainstream record, I still found them dope because the storytelling or immortal technique. I mean, my favorite song is, is Dance 
Dancing with the Devil. I mean, that oh, yeah, song that, is that song fucks dope. you up, though. It really <laughs> it fucks you up, man. Oh, we can't hear you again, Moreno. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the interview's uh, freaking long too, huh? <laughs> That's why I don't know. Yeah. We got no, 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 I just think it's my. Um, and what I wanted to say is like uh, Immortal Technique, the Dancing with the Devil is one of my favorite tracks. Yeah. And it's really dark. And I remember when I first uh, when I first listened to it, I was like, I had like six days of sleepless nights. Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it, very, you know, traumatizing and it's crazy. But yeah, he also said that's yeah. a true story too. Exactly, and that's why I'm very a uh, fond and even I respect also Outcast, Killer Mike, oh, yeah. you know. These are dope too. So, I don't have no top 5. It depends really on my mood. I mean, I listen to everyone because I don't know if you see my Instagram posts. I oh, yeah, post a lot of I post many CDs. These are my CDs that I own. So oh, and you can tell copies. these are physical copies. Yeah, man. fuck Spotify. <laughs> man. I got I, physical I copies. Look mine, man. <laughs> I got physical copies. And people are really astonished. Um, even Onyx gave me a like. Oh, like, shout Onyx. out to Onyx. Yeah, Dope ass yeah. group, man. Dope ass group. Yeah. They're still doing <clears throat> their thing, too. Yeah, they're still doing their thing. And you know, their first album, Back the Fuck Up, is one of my yes, favorite man. albums. I mean, this is so dope. I mean, Slam, Throw Your Guns. I mean, those are classic jams. I love dope, them. Man. So, I don't, like I said, I don't have no top five. Yeah. I mean, I could listen to all of them all day long without skipping any tracks. And I think, too, you know, M talked about it's really hard having a top, you know, five or ten throughout, you know, a couple of years, because it's always, you know, changing. Hip-hop is always evolving, so it's hard. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, I'm not the type of guy that, um, you know, I only listen to East Coast. I have, uh, I'm listening also to many West Coast artists, like yeah. King T, NWA, Eazy-E, <clears throat> Exhibit, you know. I listen to them all, Mac 10, The West Side Connection, um, all amazing guys, Cube. Ice T, no, Ice T is still dope, man. He's uh, still dope, man. Up. Yeah, L Cool J. I mean, you know, the list yeah. goes on and on. So I could take, I could give you like three hundred lists or four hundred lists of rappers that I like. Even oh yeah, I like yeah. Hobson as well. <laughs> He's dope too. It's just you know you're a fan of you know hip hop, man. Someone who's exactly. a fan of you know, hip hop is gonna love you know every artist out there, man. It's crazy. Exactly. It's like a drug, you know. Yeah, exactly. I even have from Vanilla Ice, you know, oh, Take man. It to Extreme, his album. Yeah. His single was Ice Ice Baby. Uh, I still, I, I, I'm a sucker for that. Not because he's yeah. not the right rapper. It's just because hip hop. He, whether you like it or not, he, he belongs to part of hip hop. Yeah. Because he was a huge hip-hop. record back in the day. And of course, Cypress Hill. How can I f- yeah. forget my vatos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yo, man, I was watching one of the interviews too. They got uh this uh rapper up there and they got him pretty high, man. He was tripping. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Oh yeah, that's the smoke box from Be yeah, Real, yeah, yeah. right? Maybe, yeah. maybe one day, you know, we'll see you up there, man, and you're gonna be tripping too, man, you know. Oh man, I I think I would sleep there and <laughs> masturbate. Great, yeah. <laughs> you just start doing that in a you know, middle of the interview. They're like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh man, that's crazy. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Man. All yeah. right. So um with all those artists that you mentioned, um, the next question is obviously, you know, if you were stranded in a, you know, um deserted island just you, you could only have two albums to listen to while being there, which ones, mm-hmm. you know, would it be, man? And I know it may be hard. Oh man, that's hard. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> oh shit. Damn, I don't know. I don't know because, you know, I have from the Wu Tang every every even their solo projects they're so dope. Uh, I don't know. Only two. Uh we, we could probably go up. How, how much you want to go up to? <laughs> Three hundred. <laughs> oh man! That... <laughs> Make sure no, you're okay. The whole, you know, collection, man. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, I would definitely take Bizarre's album. The, the handicap circus mm. 
and Big L Lifestyles Over the Dangers Over the Poor. Those two albums, yep. Yeah. And of course, um, the number three is Billie Eilish. Billie, Billie Eilish, man. A poster to go, you know, along with it too, man. Yeah, and with some lotion. <laughs> some lotion. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So um the last question that I had, man, obviously, um, I know in uh Vienna, you know, they asked you to do a song for a museum. Um, how did that happen also, you know? Will we be seeing, you know, more Moreno on doing, you know, more projects for his community in Vienna? Oh, I'm definitely on it. I'm definitely on it. Um, I cannot tell you when exactly. Yeah. Because, um, <clears throat> you know, as an independent artist, your budget is not that big. So it will take time. But when the time is right, you'll be the first one that I will send the link to and you can listen to it. So oh, you can man. see more projects. Um I even sent you, you know, when I was recording for the museum, the song. Yeah. Yeah. So it's actually out there now on, on the museum's page. I will, I will send you the link later on. Yeah, I'll definitely. And I'll also, you know, um, post um, your album Fear and um, the R article and as well as, you know, this song for the museum in the description box below for anybody, you know, who wants to check it out, man. Yeah. And try to also go to my homepage www.skindevilentertainment.com and you'll find more information because I have an own website, you know? Yeah. A shout out to Daniela because she's doing it for me. And you also have the link to my merch. So if you want to have f- uh, physical CDs and we can talk about it. So there's even, if you go to my website and you can send a mail directly to m- me, yeah, and I can answer every fan letter, fan mails, whatever. I will answer them hundred percent. It's genuine, and <clears throat> like I said, go even cop that fear merch. You want, you don't want to lose that. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a dope ass album too, man. A masterpiece, and I called it, you know, before anybody else did. I mean, I told you this is gonna be a, you know, the album. You remember that, man? Yeah, you did, you did, and now it's not. It, it's not. It's now in the category to be nominated as one of the best albums. So, oh man, oh damn, who would have knew? I mean, yeah, you you knew it. I mean, god damn, can you see the future? <laughs> <laughs> I just when will i be a millionaire <laughs> <laughs> yo man oh man and i called it you're gonna have you know a lot of success too man oh man but you're dope too man i heard some yeah. songs of you oh yeah yeah <laughs> i definitely you know uh did music back then you know when i was in high school man but you know due to you know my speech impediment it, it's very hard you know what i mean okay but you know, don't don't kill yourself. I mean, you will. <laughs> I, I think you will definitely will somehow manage to do it because yeah. Um, there was also a rapper who has the speech impediment like you, and he overcome his you know, and yeah, now yeah. he's one of I, don't, I just forgot his name. Do you know whom I am talking about? I, I think you told me before too, but I'm forgetting the name. Yeah, me too, man. Fuck, man. I forgot his name. He, he was from man. a rap group, right? Yeah, he was from a rap group. Exactly. See, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But anywho, I think, you know, just don't lose your, don't waste your talent. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you, man. Yeah, definitely. You know, real recognize real. This, this is what Tupac used to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, man, um, you know, before we leave, there's two more questions I got to ask you. Obviously, you know, how does it feel to be, you know, D12's, you know, last long, you know, member, man? Oh, it feels great. Uh, it, it feels <laughs> like you, it feels like you can masturbate whole, all day. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. And you cannot get enough of it. <laughs> so, um, the last question that I got, obviously, I think you probably already answered this, but you can, you know, um, Probably answer yeah, more sure. than one. So for the last question is, you know, what can we expect for you? Are there, you know, any other projects that are going to be coming out pretty soon? Also, are there, you know, any shout outs you want to give out, you know? Okay. Um, there are some projects, like I said, um, the EP that I'm working on. Um, if it's not coming out this year, it will come out next year. Um, yeah, I want to give shout out to Anastasia, to Lydia 
to you, to Pace One, to H Rams, to Aria Rade, to King Handsome, Black. I mean, they're so dope. I want to also take a special shout out to Marissa, uh, my PR team. Um, I want to shout out to all the people who were listening to Fear and supporting me from since day one. Shout out to my Spotify listeners because damn. Yeah, I saw that too. It went crazy, man. Uh, Yeah, so it's like, it's unbelievable. I don't know what to say. So shout out to Daniela. uh, Shout out to Case, to Lil T, to all my bros. We were doing music. And of course, shout out to All Day Hip Hop, a.k.a. Ruben. Thank you, man. Thank you. Oh, yeah, there's a a song I'm doing for, uh, especially for you, you know, so that you will keep your head up type of song. Yeah. yeah, like I said, you know, life can be, you know, <clears throat> fucking chaotic for some. For some, it's, you exactly. know, it, it's more and chaotic I, than usual. And then I decided, you know, I will put some some words about you that, you know, never give up. Just look forward. I know life can be diff- tough and difficult, but, you know, as an artist, this is how we strive and survive. Yeah, it's true, man. We're going to, you know, find, you know, some way to cope with it and, you know, just exactly. keep moving forward, man. Exactly. But yeah, any yeah, I, you know other question or anything you want to put out there? Yeah, shout out to Ike Beats. I almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> We're not forgetting about you. We just have a lot of people. Ike Beats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and John Jakes. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, you yeah, need I mean, some really dope them. producer, man. Really, really. Dope. Yeah, yeah. You should. You should probably take some beats from him. Yeah, yeah. He he, uh, gave, he gave me some, man. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. Maybe, you know, we can probably do, you know, another interview later on and, you know, have you do, you know, a freestyle, even, you know, with uh, Eat Beats and stuff like that, man. Like, with one of his beats, too, man. Probably by the wow. next interview, man. So, be pretty good. Wow. That's that's great. Yeah, I'm definitely down for that. I'm definitely down for that. And, you know, shout out to all people who are supporting me. And shout out, of course, to you again for having me here for this first interview. Yeah. Man, also, man, uh, shout out to, you know, Billie Eilish and stuff like that, man. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Billie Eilish. And she's oh, man. number one talentless hack I ever heard in my life. <laughs> Yo, man. So it was good, you know, it was a good interview, man. Uh, thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. It really was. It really was. I appreciate it. Yeah, much love, man. All right, then much love. And we keep in touch. Yeah, man. Most definitely, man.